Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvellous video. Since the 1977 premiere of Star Wars A New Hope, fans have been curious about the famed Darth Vader, the monster in the costume, and what lies under it. We didn't start getting answers until the prequel series began in 1999. Anakin Skywalker was saved by the newly appointed Emperor after sustaining severe wounds on Mustafar during a confrontation with his old teacher, Obi-Wan Kenobi, in 2005 Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Anakin injured both of his limbs, his one surviving biological arm and probably sustained up to fourth degree blisters throughout what remained of his body, which were severe enough to compromise his internal organs during the duel. These injuries might have been deadly if Anakin had not undergone the professional care that changed him into the robotic Darth Vader audiences first saw over 40 years ago. Vader obviously needs his armor to live, but what features does the armor have and how does it help him stay alive? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. A specialized armor to hide some terrible deformities and weaknesses. Darth Vader's suit, also known as Darth Vader's armor, was an outfit of armor worn by Darth Vader, the cyborg Sith Lord. The suit was designed with life support technology to ensure Vader's survival after sustaining lightsaber and burn injuries in a confrontation with Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi at Mustafar. He couldn't live without the suit after the combat at the lava pit on Mustafar. In addition to its functional application, Darth Vader's suit instilled dread and horror throughout the galaxy under the reign of the Galactic. Empire. Obi-Wan summed it up best, he's more machine than man now. The suit was destroyed following Vader's defeat in the Battle of Endor. The helmet, however, lingered and later fell into the hands of Vader's grandson, First Order warrior Kylo Ren. Darth Vader's suit was constructed of Jura steel, obsidian, plastoid, and plasteel. Even though its design instilled dread and reflected the power of the Galactic Empire, it was also crucial to Vader's life following his fall on Mustafar. The outfit could also withstand Eternal Rose technopathy. In addition to Providing life support, the Sith Lord's headgear contributed to his terrifying look. The suit contained ten layers of protection, each constructed of an extremely strong alloy that could shield Vader from certain explosions and weaponry. Hundreds of novels, short stories, comic books, and other media have been published as part of the franchise's canon. Fans learn a lot about Darth Vader's powers and qualities from these bits of fiction. Sith priests used magic to safeguard Darth Vader's armor, making it almost indestructible, at least when he was wearing them. The Sith priest's defensive power is also what permits Darth Vader's suit and mask to sustain his life. That's why Darth Vader managed to not only live, but annihilate his adversaries with a flick of his wrist, despite receiving life-threatening injuries during his battle with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Darth Vader donned the suit for nearly two decades until being redeemed and killed. He first despised the suit, but after five years of living with it, he grew to like how it shielded him from the galaxy as a whole and allowed him to focus on becoming a true weapon of the darkness. Vader faced his old student, Ahsoka Tano, three years before the Battle of Yavin, in a combat in Inside the Malachor Sith Sanctuary. During the conflict, Vader's helmet sustained significant damage, rendering his speech modulator inoperable and revealing his right eye. Vader made it out of the place alive but was fatigued and out of breath. When Grand Admiral Thrawn and Vader headed on a mission to Batu, he carried at least one backup suit on board the Chimera. He spent a while in a Bacta tank at his fortress on Mustafar before wearing the suit again to visit director Orson Krennic before the Battle of Scarif. Vader faced up against his son, Luke Skywalker, sometime after the Battle of Hoth on board Cloud Metropolis, a mining city hovering in Bespin's clouds. After slicing his father on the shoulder, Skywalker inflicted a little bit of damage to his dad's suit. The complexities of his helmet. Darth Vader's suit, like traditional Sith equipment fashioned by ancient Sith droids, was designed to be both terrifying and fearsome. But surprisingly enough, Darth Vader's famous helmet was almost not going to be a part of the man's attire. When the designers and George Lucas first envisioned Darth Vader, they pictured him wearing a scarf that covered his face. It comes to reason, therefore, that Darth Vader's history surely had to be considerably different from what it is now. Given how much effort the helmet expends to keep Vader living and breathing, there's no chance a simple scarf would accomplish the same feat if Darth Vader's story were the same. As the design for his helmet began to take shape, Lucas drew inspiration from a variety of films and historical personalities. As it became clear that the villain required something more formidable than a cloth to match the villain's demeanor, the idea was shifted from scarf to helmet. George Lucas borrowed heavily for Star Wars from a variety of sources. The Jedi Order, horizontal cuts between scenes, and even Darth Vader's helmet were all heavily influenced by Seven Samurai. It doesn't take much imagination to notice how similar Darth Vader's helmet and suit are to 
are those of a samurai. The helmet, made of durasteel, obsidian, and plasteel, gave Vader's natural voice a terrifying rumble, owing to vocal cord damage, and also had neural needles that scarily linked with the roof of his skull and spine to form one interconnected suit. Vader couldn't use cybernetics without them. Two slightly jagged ridges stretched across the eyes of the helmet's face, accentuating them. It was firmly believed that the helmet's incredibly powerful metallic hull had been made powerful and enhanced using dark alchemy, with the precise technique not being recorded in the Rinnell Medical Academy's database. This helmet featured a raised edge that ran between both his eye sockets to the rear of his head. It was secured onto the mask by a pressurized seal similar to that of a Class C suit. The rough edges also deflected potential energy hits onto the heavy shoulder plate. It also had radiator conduction pads fitted inside the helmet to enable excess heat to flow through the metal surface and inserted pins into Vader's skin when secured in place, feeding neurological intelligence on brain activities to the centralized chess computer. Darth Vader's suit has very few pieces that could be removed or changed. Fortunately, the Sith Lord's helmet could be switched out as needed. However, it had to be handled with care and done under the correct conditions. But as we now know, Darth Vader might face death if he went too long sans his helmet. Vader's helmet also did much more than simply manage his body's survival and deliver nutrients. It also provided information about his surroundings and gave him an advantage over his opponents. The helmet was continually checking for dangers and alerting Vader to possible threats that may damage or kill him. In addition to delivering data on his surroundings, the helmet also offered details on how to effectively tackle a specific circumstance that is occurring around him, giving him a more strategic advantage over his opponents. Thanks to his helmet, Darth Vader understood which force abilities would produce the best results in a particular circumstance. We'd received our first good luck inside Vader's helmet at the climax of Star Wars Return of the Jedi, once the Sith Lord eventually removed his headpiece to meet his son. The complex nature of the helmet and how well it's bonded to Darth Vader's head are shown at that reveal. The helmet, like his outfit, is linked to his skull with screws that not only hold it secure in violent battle scenarios, but also protect his head from breaking apart. Darth Vader's body is continually threatening to come apart as a result of the terrible damage he sustained during his struggle with Obi-Wan Kenobi. As a result, his armor served to hold everything in place. Why is his mask so painful to wear? The mask was among the most unpleasant, but still one of the highly useful pieces of the suit. As previously stated, Vader had a network of pins in his flesh inside his armor and mask. Unfortunately, the needles that sent neurological signals throughout his system and allowed him to move his limbs were also causing him chronic pain. Darth Vader was constantly being poked and probed at by minuscule little pinpoints to enable his suit to analyze and channel data as a result of this. Emperor Palpatine claimed that the needles contained Kuhunin ingredients that would reduce his discomfort, but this was incorrect. As all of us know, an enraged Sith Lord is a strong being, let alone a being who's constantly tortured by his suit. It's no surprise he's always shown as a little furious, with the constant itching from going around with pins in his skin. How does he see things? Unfortunately for Darth Vader, life wasn't panning out too smoothly. After his confrontation with Obi-Wan upon the Mustafar system, the bulk of Vader's body was engulfed in flames. It reduced him to a limbless burned torso on the brink of a lava flow, only to be crammed into an oppressive suit and tortured for the remainder of his life. Obviously enough, this caused his eyesight to deteriorate significantly. Darth Vader's eyesight is claimed to have both the advantages and drawbacks of the technology in the Star Wars novel. Darth Vader's mask's eye visors enabled him to see much beyond the usual visual spectrum, in addition to allowing him to analyze and make use of his surroundings. Multiple screens were included in the mask's lenses, providing him with a continual stream of information and increasing his already powerful linkage to the Force. His eyesight was also pretty much flawless. Darth Vader, in reality, had the ability to see in complete darkness, which came in handy in a variety of combat circumstances. Given how badly his eyes were injured on Mustafar, his mask was critical for merely seeing the area around him. Vader's mask gave him better vision than just about any other living creature. It's also unsurprising that his outfit was designed to keep him from shriveling up in space. In fact, his mask was exclusively engineered to protect his eyeballs from bulging and being damaged by the colossal fluid pressure. If he forgets to wear his helmet, Vader's eyesight would take longer to adjust to a change in light precisely as if he were wearing night vision goggles. However, Vader's sight features ultraviolet wavelengths that allow him to filter out some light waves while mending his injured retinas. His helmet's optics only show infrared images. Darth Vader indeed only views the universe through crimson filters. The reasons behind this differ according to the sources. By employing ice shields that slipped over his optical lesions and reacted within 5 milliseconds, the mask's vision systems allowed his injured retinas to acclimate to extraordinarily bright light, which included the Death Star's beam. That's why, in Return of the Jedi, Vader requests to see Luke using his own eyes.
His spine and limbs are semi-mechanized. Vader sustained a severe injury in his upper neck, but the first few vertebrae in his spine were not normal. Their razor-sharp regularity implies that they were cybernetic substitutes. Lord Vader's vertebrae were made of a different material from the remainder of his bones, and without his vertebral bionics, he became a powerless quadriplegic. Above the fourth or third vertebrae, the spinal cord was not broken. Because he could breathe faintly for a few moments independently, the severance must have been almost but not quite complete. Although his damages on Mustafar didn't have a significant impact on his spine, they were severe enough that when combined with the anticipated pressure of the shoulder gear and the subsequently adopted hermetic lapel, the original joints had to be supplemented with artificial and functionally superior components. Vader was compelled to wear a heavy electrode-studded leash that supported his helmet to protect the cybernetic parts that replaced his top vertebrae. In Attack of the Clones, Anakin Skywalker's right hand was severed midway between his shoulder and elbow after a violent combat with Count Dooku at Geonosis. Lord Vader lost the right arm at the shoulder with minor blood loss in the book Splinter of the Mind's Eye, dated soon after the Battle of Yavin. This suggests that it was not the biological arm, but rather a significant or total cybernetic replacement. Skeletal evidence strongly suggests that Vader's left hand is also prosthetic, at least in the location of the shoulder. When he lost his combat on Mustafar, much of his left hand was amputated, and the Emperor's physicians evidently did not reconnect it. His mechanical appendages gave him more strength than an average man. He could modify the servo drivers and valves in his forearms to provide his hands enough power to smash almost anything they could grab. He could pull an adult individual off the ground with the force of his arms only, but he always had the ability to do so using the force, notably in anger. His gloves were made of a special micronized iron which could deflect everything but a lightsaber attack. There's little evidence on the final status of Lord Vader's legs. The lower parts of his limbs were severed on Mustafar, but the extent to which his upper leg survived in subsequent years when he saw his son is unknown, as he might have suffered more injuries. Some men his age have bad knees, but Vader has remarkable agility, a fiercely confident stride, and the ability to effortlessly kneel and stand. The superb functioning of Vader's legs implies two possibilities. They're primarily cybernetic replacements, or on the other hand, his legs are intact and extraordinarily fit for a man his age. Given Lord Vader's overall bulk and obvious athleticism, this notion cannot be discounted out of contention. Vader could not typically run due to the massive amount of bulk the full armor possessed, with the shoulder armor alone weighing 12.2 kilograms. However, he was still competent to do so if required. Furthermore, he could still use force speed, but only on rare occasions. With his new legs, Vader had to make slow, methodical, thudding steps at first. When he got used to his prosthetic legs, he kept the loud stride since it heralded his arrival, but he eventually walked more naturally. His artificial legs would enable him to jump a long distance when needed. Vader's lower legs Dura steel alloy was strengthened with armor strips. His boots were likewise magnetically attached to his mechanical limbs, and the bottoms could magnetically stick to bulkheads when Vader so desired. How is his skeleton and nervous system functioning? Instead of the sternum, Vader's collarbones are attached to a clearly synthetic support system. Four small curving characteristics connect his neck vertebrae with his arms or upper back, which might be cybernetic data or power connections or extra neck supports. Around the cybernetic control box chest plate, a large wire enters Vader's body. It links to a vast internal structure that is too deep to be the heart or lungs but might be the liver. Alternatively, it might be an interior device that regulates lung and heart processes but is placed lower for design reasons. Vader retains his original human anatomy in his upper chest, neck, head, and maybe an upper right arm stump. These parts of his physique are most likely entirely or mostly original flesh. Several neck vertebrae appear to have been substituted in order to regain physical control following a catastrophic spinal injury. The canonical data provides little to no information about Vader's legs. The Dark Lord's lower left hand most likely has a limited human skeleton, but it clearly has prosthetic components around the shoulder. Canonically, it is unknown how much of Lord Vader's limbs, lower left arm, and upper right hand was synthetic on the day he died. The naturally occurring organic bones were also artificially changed by mineral solutions pouring through the food feeds to increase tensile strength. In particular, the right clavicle was implanted with a device that introduces a synthetic neurotoxin called cohunin, produced from cohun centipedes, to reduce Vader's pain perception. His neurological system was the least damaged by his wounds at Mustafar. Nonetheless, it was equipped with sensor webs that traced activity from the cerebellum to the motor and sensory neurons down the spinal cord, allowing it to be continually and closely monitored. As a result, if his nerves were unable to interact with his mechanical prosthesis, Vader would become immobile, and a hyperwave signal would be sent to the Empal Su Recon. Muscle fibers were also changed to have electrical activity generators inserted within them to activate injured tissue. I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. It is too late 
for me. Can Darth Vader feel anything? The state of his senses. Most of Vader's faculties were irrevocably impaired as a result of his injuries and were thus substituted by his armor. Vader could only eat through his mouth while he was inside a hyperbaric chamber because he needed to remove his triangular breathing vent. He was actually known to say in public that he never drank or ate. It was significantly simpler for Vader to acquire nutrition from liquids, injectable and drinkable, and to deal with solid and liquid waste using catheters, collecting pouches and recyclers. If he did want to eat Rep Med Vita paste, he would do so using using straws hidden behind the frames of his face mask. Although liquids were preferred, he could still chew if he so desired, though a nutrition feed supplied Vader with all of the sustenance he required. Furthermore, Vader still could smell normally, but the helmet he wore enhanced his olfactory capabilities. His outer ear cartilage had been restored by the medical droids. However, his eardrums had burned beyond recovery in Mustafar's heat. Sound waves had to be directly transferred to prosthetics inside his inner ear. Sounds were heard as though emanating from beneath the water's surface. Worse, the embedded sensors needed to have appropriate selectivity and allow too many ambient noises to be detected, so determining their direction and distance was challenging. The sensors sometimes needled him with unwanted feedback or added echo or vibrato qualities to even the most minor noise. Lord Vena. Can you hear me? His suit offers unbearable pain. The entire outfit was ridiculously heavy and the helmet was painful to wear, much alone to breathe through. Darth Vader was continuously claustrophobic while wearing the costume. Even the weight and size of the redesigned lightsaber had to be adjusted to accommodate his new outfit and grip. It was clear that his suit was meant to cause suffering. Vader sometimes wondered whether Darth Sidious had purposefully constructed the armor to limit him. The suit's technology was already antiquated, having been utilized to reconstruct and build General Grievous decades before. While Vader kept his Jedi wisdom, he began to question his role in the Force, and although he'd taken the preliminary steps toward arousing the strength of the darkness, he questioned his ability to maintain that power. Vader, a mechanical engineer by nature, was astounded by the inadequacy of the medic droids and trusted with his restoration in Sidious's lab on Coruscant. He was exceptionally touchy regarding the subject of his suit, because he was aware that his injuries limited him and that he would never be able to reach his full potential as a result. The suit's insulation gave gave only limited protection from electrical discharges. However, the maximum amount of electricity it could absorb seemed to be rather considerable. The suit systems were so fragile that an opponent could disable Vader's whole suit by hitting a single button on his breast control panel. The bodysuit's sleeves didn't embrace his limbs as they should have, and the elbow-length sleeves sagged and lumped at his wrists. The monitoring system beeped incessantly and for no apparent purpose, the lights serving only as constant reminders of his fragility. Vader would try to compensate for the armor's weakness to force lightning by adding in insulation. However, this gave only minimal protection. Only his right arm prosthetic, which he had tailored to match his demands as a Jedi, seemed natural to him. Darth Vader crafted Force Lightning to accommodate his disability, preferring to employ it as a last recourse. Yet he was also more vulnerable to it due to the fragile life support. His electronic components were woefully delicate, and he had to shield his critical chest panel when battling. The pneumatic systems that provided flexibility and support were occasionally slow to react. At the very least, Vader could still shrug. Because of the weight of the cloak and chest, chest armor, he had trouble lifting his hands over his neck, only doing it when absolutely required. The pectoral gear that protected the synthetic lung weighed on him heavily, as did the electrode-studded brace that supported the oversized headgear, the delicate structures of the mask, and the rough scars in his skinned head, which owed as much of its injuries to what he had suffered on Mustafar as it did to attempts at emergency trepanation aboard Sidious's shuttle on the way back to Coruscant. Furthermore, the high boots were an unsuitable fit for his mechanical feet, whose tips lacked the electrostatic responsiveness of his similarly fabricated fingers. The bulky footwear, elevated in the heel, canted him considerably forward, causing him to proceed with extreme caution lest he fall or slump over. The medical droids had used an inferior alloy instead of durasteel for his foot prosthetic, and they'd forgotten to verify the strips that guarded the electromotive lines. He even felt the need to utilize the force to walk, although he became accustomed to it. Vader needed a special airspeeder designed for him to maneuver comfortably because of his enormous physique and unusual demands. These gadgets made it much more challenging for him to walk with ease, let alone elegance. The innermost layer of the pressurized suit was constantly snagging on spots where the sheets were fastened to ankle and knee joints as a consequence of its ill-fittingness. Moreover, they were so hefty that he frequently felt fixed to the ground or like he was moving in extreme gravity. Oh. 
Darth Vader's suit is a 24-7 life support. Though the magnitude of Vader's injuries were hidden under his intimidating armor, it was clear that he needed a complex life system to survive. This life support system was built into Vader's armor, liberating him from the limits of external life support equipment. The belt and the breastplate of the suit housed the control systems for his life support, which ensured that Vader's body got adequate oxygen, nourishment, and medication. With this system, Vader could survive in practically any environment, even space. Circuitry all through the suit monitored its cardiac, respiratory, and neurological systems, while three slot-like data ports on Vader's chest unit provided access to diagnostic data. The outfit, like Stormtrooper armor, had a delicate temperature regulation mechanism that could be regulated by a functioning device on his belt. This unit was sufficiently strong to enable Vader to walk across the snowy surfaces without the need for further protection. The armor's impulse generators sent electrical impulses to Vader's muscles, giving him incredible movement and endurance, despite his badly wounded muscles and nerves. Sith alchemy was used to generate substances that increased Vader's strength and constitution to augment this. These were regularly administered into him by the life support mechanism in his armor. The life support model was created to be pretty durable because the suit served as armor. However, the electrical systems themselves were fragile. Vader's armor was constructed around a plastoid belt that shielded his natural and artificial vital organs in his midsection. Though Vader's heart continued to beat, his pulse was machine controlled and could not accelerate unless commanded by the suit. His shoulders, upper torso and shins were encased in more apparent durasteel armor plates. His gloves and chest and arm padding were composed of blast dampening armor that was immune to burning and well protected from explosions, penetration and poisoning. Furthermore, his headgear and mask prevented light from overwhelming him. When Vader's pressure suit was broken, it self-sealed against cuts and burns. His suit gave him extreme levels of strength and power. Darth Vader was a formidable opponent. His outfit enhanced his strength. Vader's armor was so highly sophisticated that he could manipulate its mechanisms to gain or lose strength. Only a massive extent of distraction to his armor or emotions could restrict or even impair his exceptional physical abilities, something only a few of his opponents could ever achieve. Despite the suit's flaws, it provided Darth Vader with superhuman power. Despite its size, the armor provided Vader with a lot of advantages. The first thing that was noticeable was that the garment performed admirably as armor, granting Vader with exceptional endurance and enabling him to withstand potentially lethal wounds or injuries. The armor also gave modest immunity to lightsaber blades, enabling Vader to suffer potentially catastrophic injuries without noticeable repercussions, and considerably increased his stamina. Furthermore, the suit allowed Vader to operate in exceedingly unfavorable settings, such as the vacuum of the universe. It self-contained oxygen flow and air filtering devices also rendered Vader almost immune to the impacts of aerial biological weapons. Darth Vader's cloak was more than a simple black silken robe. The cape was composed of armor weave fabric. As the material's name implies, it was a strongly armored fabric. As stated on the Star Wars wiki, the material could dispel blaster bolts and even withstand lightsaber blows. It was typically found in the hands of bounty hunters or troops. Vader's armor weave cape had several distinctive features. Both Vader's garment and the cloak were designed to keep him warm in cold weather while staying light enough to let him move around. His cape could deflect a wide range of deadly missiles and lightsaber blows. It also served to safeguard Vader's outfit. The cape kept dangerous contaminants from getting into the system and causing damage to the suit's circuitry, including water, snow, mud, frost, and even awful sand. The all-powerful Dark Lord Darth Vader appeared to require some type of protection against the even more terrible sand. Oh, it's also fireproof as well. Vader's gloves were much more than simply a stylish pair of mitts. The gloves like his cloak were derived from skier Khan's unbreakable Sith amulets and were made of a micronized Mandalorian iron weave. This led Vader to protect himself from lightsaber assaults and blaster shots. The gloves were wrapped in a magnetic clasp that hooked into Vader's prosthetic tubing, allowing him to avoid changing armor, clothes, or equipment during combat. His gloves, like his boots, were lined with extra padding. This gave Vader a more accurate feel for his cybernetic arms, which he had lost in battles with Count Dooku and Obi-Wan Kenobi on Geonosis and on Mustafar, respectively. His cyber Magnetic armor also confused foes as to which of Vader's appendages were mechanical and which were not, leading them to strike sections of his body that weren't essential. Ah! 
How can he survive without his suit? Vader's outfit was a complex piece of machinery. It was an extremely advanced and sophisticated suit that enabled him to accomplish all of the things we've mentioned above and so much more. The suit has to be thoroughly cleaned in order for it to work properly. To prevent a stench from developing due to prolonged usage, the suit has to be removed from Vader and cleansed and washed. Regardless of how linked the suit looked to be in terms of his cybernetics, practically all of the outfit's exterior components could be detached in their entirety, since Vader was known to frequently remove both the armor and his artificial limbs during service sessions. It required monthly checks to ensure that it was still operating correctly. After all, that was what was managing to keep Vader alive. As we've stated several times, Darth Vader could only survive for a few seconds without his suit. Diagnostics on both the armor and Vader's torso were required to ensure that everything was still working correctly. Despite keeping Darth Vader alive, his suit was highly unpleasant. The Dark Lord enjoyed every chance to remove it, and they were his private meditation rooms. This was especially tough for Darth Vader, who had to remain in liquidized tanks while his armor was mended or cleansed. It provided him with the pleasure of being free of it, but it also pushed him to confront utter vulnerability without his shell or protection. The other was his fortress on Mustafar, wherein Vader soaked in a tank of Bacta gel to cure his wounds. Those were the few instances when he was not unhappy. <laughs> His suit comes with a waste recycling system. Darth Vader rarely needs physical nourishment. He actively chose not to eat when given the option since he was attempting to become less human and loathed his human appearance. Vader was always on a hunger strike. We never really see him eat in the traditional way. The first time we see Darth Vader around foodstuff is in Episode 5, the Empire Strikes Back. In the novels, Vader states that he has to forsake such basic joys as well as many others. Nonetheless, there are compensations. He can eat, but this would force him to remove his mask, which would be both humiliating and unpleasant. Having said that, he consumes Vita-paste nutrition through an artificial bladder placed in his body. After a while of being forced to swallow the revolting paste, he asked that his surgical medic droids build him a custom-made mechanism that eliminated the necessity for him to eat, much alone digest any kind of food. Darth Vader sipped the paste off several straws while he could still stand the awful taste of Vita paste. The straws were located within the frame of his mask, which was positioned on the front wherever his voice could be heard. The paste itself was created for people in species who had the problem of chewing natural organic food and was used as a substitute. If he ever felt thirsty or hungry, having straws poked in your face in order to swallow a bunch of the most horrible stuff available in order to stay alive must be some experience. Add to it his refusal to eat since it makes him appear too human. The suit of Darth Vader is a sealed structure that must only be maintained in key locations. The human body is not a closed system, and it's constantly creating or in the process of producing waste. So, where does all that junk go when our beloved moody Sith Lord is out on the battlefield, putting down rebellions without contact with the support systems? Vader was outfitted with a waste recycler with this in mind. All of the meals he ate were broken down and recycled into a chamber of his suit before being destroyed. Consider it a mechanical diaper. Waste recyclers might even be found on us asteroid miners to keep them from using the restroom. Similarly, Vader owned a highly upgraded version that kept the Dark Lord from ever using the toilet while being environmentally friendly. Given that he doesn't have to eat, it's reasonable to presume that he also isn't required to excrete either. Artificial skin of Darth Vader comes with side effects. Darth Vader's skin was entirely destroyed by the fires of Mustafar. He received a form of synthetic skin to substitute the flesh seared off his bones to solve this problem. The droids patched artificial skin on his scars during his procedure. Unfortunately, it is indeed true that Darth Vader's flesh is no longer organic. If not the entirety of it, was subjected to third-degree burns. Vader survived by focusing on his agony with the Force long enough to keep him going, but that's a tale for another another day. Darth Vader possessed something known as synth flesh. It was a substance composed of a synthetic gel that united synthetic flesh with actual flesh, or whatever remained of such flesh. It was used to treat burns and other types of flesh wounds. Having said that, practically the whole torso of Vader was covered with synth flesh. Not to mention how unpleasant the idea of replacing flesh sounds. Consider how Vader would have felt when his charred flesh was bonded with fresh synthetic skin. Worse, Sidious left him awake during the procedure, so he could experience every ounce of suffering 
spring in order to fully strengthen him as a student. Having an itch that you can't scratch is the worst sensation in the world. Darth Vader was constantly in that state. The fake skin itched so horribly that it drove him nuts with pain. This artificial skin started to itch once he was immersed in his suit. According to the comics, Vader was always in distress owing to his freshly restored skin. His own wrecked body doesn't help since he frequently requires his necrotic flesh scrubbed away. His robotic limbs strained against his damaged skin as well. This drove Darth Vader to the brink of insanity. Vader was terrified of going nuts while undergoing these surgeries. It is believed that it reeked and that removing it was a complex affair. Given how persistent it was and how powerful he was in the Force, he ultimately became accustomed to it. He centered on the agony to make him tougher. In a page from the Legends comic book, Darth Vader begs the medical droids to make him stay sane. Who knows how that must have felt. And it's not like he could simply solve the problem. He needed the suit all the time. The only place of refuge he could ever find was in the liquidized tank, but it was only for a very few minutes. The Dark Lord cannot get any sleep. Darth Vader is much more real at ease than most. The truth is that he was continuously uncomfortable in his suit to the extent that Vader seldom sleeps. It's difficult to sleep when you're being repeatedly poked by microscopic needles sucking out your neurological data to transmit it to a computer. Vader was constantly in desperate need of his armor. That is, he required it in order to sleep, particularly for his breathing system, even if he only intended to take a little nap. Darth Vader couldn't fall asleep even in his unique meditation room. When he did, he was startled by a distressing combination of sights, noises and agony, the majority of which included Obi-Wan or Padme. In those rare instances, Vader was tortured by dreams. His artificial breathing continued unabated and his hearing aids caught up on every sound around him. His prosthetic limbs pulled on his flesh when he attempted to relax. He could only find peace when he meditated and lost himself to the dark side. Given the abilities of his mechanized suit, it's absolutely plausible that he never needed to sleep. Nevertheless, his mind was still wholly biological. The brain requires adequate rem cycles to keep a person sane. He meditated in his liquidized room to clear his head and relax after spending too many cramped hours in his outfit. Darth Vader's cumulative sleep deprivation may have made him much more demented and unpredictable than he already was. Is Darth Vader more machine than man? In the movie Return of the Jedi, Obi-Wan Kenobi says that Darth Vader is a being who is more machine now than man. And he quickly adds that Vader was twisted and evil. Machine meeting man bears a troubling analogy for the disappearance of humanity as well as light drowning in dark throughout the saga. Darth Vader in Star Wars demonstrates a tendency to become more mechanical than human and how this signifies spiritual decay. He lost his hands and legs when he was vanquished on Mustafar. Anakin Skywalker burned on the planet of flames, leaving his humanity behind. He is no longer human only burned remnants, carrying himself down the road of the dark side with dead skeleton legs and reaching out to take and murder with lifeless skeleton hands. He can't breathe without the dead blackness surrounding him. One look at Darth Vader downplays Obi-Wan's remark. Before seeing the movies, many people assumed Darth Vader was an actual robot due to his brutal demeanor and mechanical appearance. But Obi-Wan's observation begs the question of how much of Darth Vader was genuinely human and how much of him was not. We may conclude that Vader lost around 75% percent of his limbs from each cut after losing his right hand to Count Dooku and his left hand and both legs to Obi-Wan. Darth Vader would be, at best, 68.85% human, according to Star Wars fan math, based on the amputation of his appendages alone. However, there's enough evidence to imply that he was even less of a human than he was then since he required his skin replaced and sections of his body repaired, such as his critical organs and lungs. This figure becomes much more when we consider that Vader's vertebrae are fabricated. Leave that to me. Send a distress signal, and then inform the Senate that all aboard were killed. Lord Vader? His actual voice was barely a whisper because of his rotting lungs. Vader's lungs were one of the most wounded parts of his body after his combat with Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar. It turned out that the molten lava on Mustafar emitted very deadly Koshol gases. Vader was compelled to absorb the fatal vapors due to his exposed wounds and incapacity to move. The Koshol fumes devastated the insides of his lungs as well as the tissue surrounding him. Vader struggled to breathe once Sidious discovered him. Each of his lungs were blocked. To rescue him, the surgical droids implanted 
implanted a prosthetic lung constructed of iron in the rear of his costume, which was concealed by his cape. This lung could transport oxygen through his back to his helmet, allowing him to breathe. Furthermore, an air compressor of some kind was installed near the syncopated ventilator at the crest of Vader's mask. Because of the damage to his lungs, Vader's voice was hardly audible. Vader's medical droids implanted an annunciator within him, allowing him to speak in a deep and frightening voice. Due to vocal cord damage, Vader's genuine voice is scarcely audible. His helmet featured a built-in speaker that allowed everyone to hear him. She lied. She lied to us. I told you she would never consciously betray the rebellion. Did he suffer from restricted mobility? Having all of his limbs severed must have been bad enough for Vader. He couldn't even lift the fake substitutes on his own following his surgery. Because his burns had destroyed the majority of his neural system, he now required a particular processor in his headpiece to transfer brain impulses to his mechanical limbs on his behalf. That was the purpose of the hooks in the rear of his head. It took some time for Vader to adjust to his new physique. Walking was one of the most difficult challenges. His replacement legs were created by medical droids from a substance so hefty that he could hardly raise them up. At first, he had to revert to using the force to move them. Vader eventually adjusted to the weight. Even worse, his boots were just too tiny for his feet. Vader would have wanted to be well protected, given the amount of sensitive healthcare equipment inside him. However, his arms and pecs may be over-armored. Vader could scarcely bring his arms up because the black tabard and shoulder padding under his cape were too heavy. While it shielded him from cannon fire, it also required Vader to modify his lightsaber fighting style to accommodate. Conclusion. A lot can be said about Darth Vader's suit and his inability to survive without it, but one thing was for sure, no matter how impossible it seemed, Vader was constantly trying to rid himself of his weaknesses. Vader didn't remain a submissive victim of his armor's dependence. He aggressively sought healing in the Force by channeling his fury and outrage at his afflictions on fairness. His Sith abilities were capable of restoring functionality to the lung cells, but the respite was only short, lasting only a few moments at most. Vader thought that he couldn't capture enough pure or hatred to allow the darkness of the Force to offer him permanent rejuvenation and that the ecstasy of his brief liberation damaged his deadly focus. He would occasionally open his meditation room to test how long he could go without his suit in one of his sessions. While he may not have been entirely successful in his efforts, the fact that he tried is in itself a testimony to his sheer strength and willpower. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. I feel the conflict within you let go of your hate. It is too late for me.